When I was little, I used to love sitting on a swing. I would go higher and higher, jumping at the highest point, landing on the ground, falling often, and doing it all over again for hours and hours. Now at some point between childhood and me now, I forgot how to jump out of a swing. I get to the highest point and let myself go back down and just swing to a stop. It's absolute terror even thinking about jumping out. Like, how do you land? Do you bend your knees? Are my ankles gonna shatter when I hit the ground? I'm sure if I spend an afternoon swinging, I could probably figure it out again. But the question I have is, how in the world did I forget how to do something I did non-stop as a kid? Over the past month, I've been reminded of the beautiful, chaotic cycle of being an artist. It's this ebb and flow through learning new things, and forgetting them, and relearning them all over again. If you've watched any of my videos this year, you know I've been talking non-stop about the idea of nurturing. I've been developing a workbook for creatives to nurture their creative practice. Coming out Friday, May 3rd, mark your calendars. And I've been using that workbook on my own creative practice. Late last year, I realized that I had a pretty serious creative problem. I no longer felt very connected to my creative practice. In Marie Kondo terms, it did not spark joy. In fact, I avoided my sketchbook at all costs and was seriously antsy anytime I sat down to paint something. I was so overwhelmed with fear that it wouldn't turn out right, that I couldn't come up with any cool ideas, that I'd completely forgotten how to make anything. In short, I was freaking scared, <laughs> and I didn't really want to do art anymore. But the thing is, I'm a creative person. I was literally made to create things. That creative itch didn't just go away, I just wasn't really listening to it anymore. Also, my attention span has tanked because of this thing, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> At the beginning of the year, I set an intention to fill five pages in my messy sketchbook every week for the month of January. Now, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> It was a battle. There were a few moments of peaceful sketching where we kind of hit that like avatar flow state and just had fun. But more often than not, I felt like Sarah facing off against the Goblin King at the end of Labyrinth. I had no idea what I was doing, no idea where I was going, and I wasn't having a good time. Much like jumping out of a swing, I'd just forgotten how to sketch and how to have fun sketching. So fast forward to mid-April now. I haven't been filling five pages every week, because that's kind of a lot when I have other projects that I'm working on too, but I am still making it a priority to be getting into my sketchbook each week. Whether it's a few pages, or simply a couple of doodles, the quantity doesn't really matter to me, I just don't want to lose the ground I've regained. But truthfully, it's still a battle sometimes. And I am learning that that's normal, creative struggle, and that's okay, it's part of the process. But as I've still been battling through different parts of my creative practice, I've realized something about myself that I don't like. I can get quite arrogant about my skills. Like I'm somehow above just sketching in my sketchbook, or practicing the fundamentals, or doing simple drawing exercises because I've been drawing for so many years. That arrogance has been such a detriment to me because the more I didn't practice the quote unquote simpler things, the more I just forgot how to do them. But genuinely, it's the simple practices that make the most impact in your creative practice. The simple fundamentals and the simple mindset. To create incredible cityscapes, you need to begin with simple perspective. To create believable characters, you need to start with simple anatomy. My arrogance really came in when I believed I didn't need to keep practicing the things I'd learned. But here's the kicker. You don't retain what you don't implement into your practice. So lately, I've been eating a lot of humble pie for breakfast and going back to the basics. Some of those basics we've been exploring in our quests in the Curious Creatives group on Patreon, and some of them I've just been exploring on my own. I've been reminded how exciting it is to be a beginner, even though some of these things are concepts that I've already learned, but I'm having to bring back up to the surface. It's been incredibly humbling going through the paces and seeing how my skills have regressed in different ways. But it's also been really fulfilling to watch those skills begin to come back as I keep practicing. Being a creative really is a cycle of exploring, failing, growing, and failing again. The creative practice isn't a straight line. It's a circle that you travel over and over and over and over again throughout life. 
We all go around that cycle of growth and regression for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes it's arrogance keeping us from going back to the basics. Sometimes it's other priorities in your life that have to take precedence over practicing art. Sometimes it's simply that you need to fill your creative cup in other ways, and skill practice just isn't one of them. Now while I hope I don't let myself become this arrogant again, I do recognize that I'm going to hit this point in the cycle again in the future. It's inescapable. We all have those days or seasons where it feels like we'll never be able to draw anything again. Like we have zero ideas and zero skills. But during those times, I like to take a look at my past artwork and see the visible growth. To notice that I am improving even when it feels like my skills are at a standstill. I'm also learning that while the overall creative cycle is pretty similar for each of us, our individual practices are totally unique. That's why I hate when artists on social media make hard and fast rules for every creative. For example, I always cringe when I see artists make the generalization that you need to draw every day. Do I think that's great for some artists? Absolutely. Do I think it's good for every artist? Absolutely not. I also hate the quality over quantity rule and vice versa. I think it applies to some things and some artists and not to others. We are all such wildly different people, and I think it's really dangerous when we make these kinds of generalizations. Imagine if we all drew the same way at the same speed and put out the same amount of work at the same time in the same style. We'd all be the same artist and there'd be no point in any of us being artists at all. Anywho, I'm just ranting at this point, but my point is, it's okay to go through those ebbs and flows of the creative cycle and for your creative practice to look different than the artists you see online. It's good, it's healthy, you're just riding the waves in your own way. So I want to share a little bit about how exactly I'm going back to the basics and continuing to nurture my creative practice this year. Number one, Schmo Draws Easy Art Essentials. Now, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I almost passed up on this freebie. Again, the arrogance of, well, it's easy art and I probably don't need that. Wrong, I did. I have been soaking up these PDFs like a turtle sitting on a beach in the sun. I've always loved drawing very expressive, very gestural characters, and that's pretty much how I used to draw all the time. But once I started practicing anatomy, two things happened. First, I got a little confused about what I actually wanted to draw. Did I want to draw anatomically correct characters, or characters that were more defined by emotion and gesture and exaggerated features? I'd sit there and think, well, if I sketch this the way I want to, that's not technically accurate. And secondly, that arrogance went in full force and I drew characters with more realistic anatomy and ridiculously visible muscles, kind of to show off that I knew how. <laughs> is it getting hot in here? I'm blushing, guys. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. It's dumb, it's it's sad, it's cringy. <laughs> Let me just go on ahead and click the unsubscribe button for you. <laughs> Anywho, back to drawing. So Simone has a very playful, very gestural style similar to how I used to sketch. And I've been quietly stalking her Instagram page for a few months now while I've been sketching, just trying to implement a little bit of that playfulness again into my own artwork. So when she shared her new easy art PDFs, I ate another helping of humble pie and downloaded it. Y'all, I am having so much more fun sketching characters again. I'm not so obsessive about getting every single muscle and every single bone perfect, and I'm more focused on conveying the emotion and the story that I want to. If y'all want to snag her tutorials too, there's a link in the description below. Definitely check them out. You're not going to regret it. Okay, number two, the Curious Creatives group on Patreon and Discord. While technically I'm supposed to be teaching each month, I'm learning so much along the way. Starting the group has been kind of a kick in the pants to practice my skills, and sometimes that means starting at the beginning and working my way back up. If you don't know what the Curious Creatives group is, it's an educational tier over on Patreon where we pick a topic each month and go on a curiosity quest to learn more about it. I make some tutorial, explanation PDFs, we do the exercises and share our progress on Discord. So this month we've been diving into values and one of the mini exercises was to use the value scale we created and try to value match different objects we see around the house. And let me tell you, I was tragically off on some of mine. 
I seem to think a lot of colors are much lighter than they actually are. But even just that simple exercise can be so helpful in training your eye how to see values and how to match them when you're painting. Creating the curriculum for these quests means that I also have to do the exercises, and doing those exercises, even at the simplest level, is really helping me rebuild my skills again. It also really helps that everyone in the group is super encouraging, so I feel like I can share both the pieces I'm proud of and the epic failures, and let me tell ya, they are plentiful. By the way, if you're in the Curious Creatives group, thanks for being there. I really appreciate you, and I am so glad you're along for the quest. The third way I've been going back to the basics is also what you're seeing in this video. Number three, creating more illustrations in my mixed media sketchbooks. So my intention for March was to paint two new illustrations in my sketchbook, and this was one of them. I cannot even begin to tell you how much I enjoyed painting this spread. When I paint in my sketchbook, I'm painting purely from intuition. I don't have color comps or value comps, half the time I'm just picking random colors as I go. I'm so much looser and more playful painting in a sketchbook versus painting on loose paper. Which sounds ridiculous, I know, <laughs> but it's the truth. Maybe part of that is Arsh's watercolor paper is a lot more expensive and I feel like I have to make a really great piece if I use it. I don't know, anywho. But I just put on some headphones, pull up a Joe Hisaishi playlist, and paint. It's intuitive and messy and so, so fun. So painting this spread actually came at the perfect time, but let me rewind to the birth of the idea. Late February, early March, I got probably the coolest email I have ever gotten. <laughs> Mythology Candles reached out to me and wanted to send me a PR box with some of their new High Cottage candles. I was absolutely obsessed with the winter High Cottage candles. I got Squirrel's Pantry for Christmas, and let me tell you, it is perfect for my foodie nose. Anywho, so of course I was over the moon to try the new scents. I picked out Book Nook, which I just lit for the first time the other day. It is glorious, but that's not what we're here to talk about. The second one is Green Thumb. This candle was the inspiration behind this painting. It's this incredible herby, earthy scent like tea and fresh grass and lemons all combined, and I just had to paint it. So I was having kind of a crummy weekend. We had some family members that were kind of cycling through the hospital. There was a lot going on and I was a little bit down in the dumps. I hadn't painted it all that week. And that Saturday morning, I just lit my candle, opened my sketchbook and painted. Next thing I knew it was like one o'clock and I figured lunch might be kind of important, <laughs> but I was back to painting immediately afterwards. It was just this really, really special day of painting intuitively and listening to music and enjoying my new candle. And once again, I was reminded of the ebbs and flows of the creative process. I struggled painting this character. The face was a deal for so much of it, and I really just could not get it to my liking for a while. There's this saying about jobs and creativity that if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And that could not be farther from the truth. So, so often, it does feel like work. You're sitting there just struggling with the paints and the brushes. And those moments are very uncomfortable and they're not fun. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you don't love your creative practice. It's because you love your creative practice that you sit through those uncomfy parts anyways. As I rewatch the footage of this illustration, I can easily recall the uncomfy parts. I remember racking my brain trying to figure out light math or how to paint the character's face or how dark the shadows of the pillow should be. But I also remember how happy I was to simply paint, to grab my sketchbook and sit with it for hours and hours. I remember how much I enjoyed painting the bench and adding the little dotty spotty bits and playing around with how the light trickled through the leaves. I decided to call this one Gardener's Interlude. And I think in kind of an undertone way, it's kind of a picture of my own creative practice. She's sitting, sipping some lemonade, enjoying a quiet morning in the greenhouse with her plants. But that greenhouse was built on the toil, the work, the uncomfy parts. It was also built on the basics. It started with the simple seeds and the plants continued to grow with the simple water and sunshine. There are always going to be those moments of ease and fun, but you can't have those without the hard work and the humility. 
Anywho, I do have a couple prints of this one up in my shop if this piece speaks to you too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed chatting with me about going back to the basics and exploring the simpler things. I also hope you enjoyed watching me paint this illustration, and I'd love to know what your favorite plant is. It doesn't have to be one in this piece. Um, honestly, a lot of these I don't think are actual plants, but anyways, <laughs> just a general random question. Huge thank you to the Cozy Club and Curious Creatives over on Patreon for supporting my art journey. Y'all are absolutely incredible, and your support truly makes a difference. If you've been struggling with getting into your sketchbook, then head on over and watch this video where we chat about how I've been implementing more sketching into my creative practice. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye guys!